Yes, sir. -y. We're running a chop shop around here. Oh, not that kind of chop shop. Metal chopping shop with a metal chop. It's not the best unit, but it gets the job done. Just burnt my measuring stick a little bit. I wonder. I'm going to try something a little different. That was much quicker. I don't know if that's what you would call safe. <laughs> you know, uh, angling this steel makes it much easier to cut through there. It went through so much faster. You'd think there'd be somebody that would make some kind of a device that I could sit in there and hold this properly. You guys know of something? Seen it in action? Let me know in the comments. these pieces of steel I've used using so far that I'm cutting are all been sitting in my garage for five plus years from the last project I did so saving some money
I built this trailer on the cheap. Okay, so I got two pieces at 60, two at 57, and two I'm going to cut to 37. And I'll show you in the video my sketch I've done. Not the greatest, but it's got all the measurements on it, in case you're interested. Alrighty, that's enough cutting for today, because that's all the steel I got. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to lay this out and try and give you guys an idea of what I'm looking at. And um, you can make your assessments from there. Okay, so I lied. Decided I better get this grinder that I bought at a yard sale a couple of years ago. Hey, it worked. I've never used it. And I got some sharp edges on here. <laughs> they need to be trimmed down. Well, there it is, all finished. I only wish. This is a mock-up. I want to see how things put together and see how how my sizing um, estimations came out. The uh, frame, uh, the bed of the trailer, which hasn't been welded together yet, I cut this out one by one and a half by one and a half by one two zero or one eighth inch steel that I had already laying around for another project. I guess I've already said that. And this was how much steel I had left. And the height of that bed is going to be roughly 27 inches. It may be a little bit high for center of gravity, but uh, compromises sometimes need to be made. And that was where I figured I'm going to compromise. Now, on that trailer tongue, I originally was going to go with 30 inches. And it would just look too far back. If I got to run between trees. So if you envision a tight tree on the left side of my quad. And a tight tree on the right side of the quad. I wanted to make sure. That when I'm making a slight turn in the trees. That the trailer is not going to get hung up. Or the tires and in order to do that I decided I'm going to need to go with a 23 inch standard running length on that tongue oh, I'm going to set this down a second I don't know if you're going to be able to see where I marked
Okay, when I get some more steel, I'm going to put a six and a half inch length there and a six and a half inch length over here. 21 inches between there and six and a half to here. So to visualize that better, a crossbar there and a crossbar there. I've got 24 inches between these two rails. And the reason I did that is if you remember the axle is 28 inches wide and I want to come in two inches from each tire and run uprights to secure the axle to this bed. And in order to do that, I had to put this on 24 inch centers or out, outside to outside. And those uprights are going to come, come up and hit in the middle here, in the middle here. And then I'm going to angle off the axle up out to here and up out to here. But I don't know exactly where I'm going to hit uh, these main axle support rails yet. So I don't have measurements for those. Um, these ends are uh, 37 inches. The outer rails out here are 60 inches. And these inner axle support rails are 57 inches long. Something that uh, Jamie pointed out, I can't get the trailer bed too close to the quad because the exhaust is right here so whatever I'm carrying I don't want to get the exhaust heated up too bad so I'm hoping that's going to be far enough in fact let me start that thing and I'll see if I can feel how far back that exhaust is At this point, I'm giving second thoughts about having an adjustable trailer tongue. And I may just st stick with this. The tongue is going to come off the hitch back here, come up and then angle up underneath here, and it's going to be welded to there and welded to the crossbar that it's going to go right here underneath it. I'll give you some other views. Believe it or not, those Tyler tires, tires on the trailer are the same size as the tires in the back of the quad. They're just a different model. Uh, you're able, hopefully you're able to visualize that a little better. But I want to get it mocked up before I start welding it all together. You may have noticed things are a mess around here. I'm right in the middle of a siding project, which is getting increasingly further behind. Let's try a different angle. Angle for there. Tight, tra uh, the mock-up is slightly tilted up in the front. And um, the rear axle, I don't have it centered yet. It was just needed it close to get an idea of how this thing was going to work. All right, so if you have some ideas, let me know what you think. Um, throw some ideas at me.
my buddy Dave said to go with stake pockets for removable racks so we could slide elk on and off of here. I'm hoping that's not going to get me too close to the tire, uh, trees when I put a little stake pocket out on here. It becomes a little, like a little sore thumb sticking out and catch on a tree. But we shall see. 40 inches wide by 5 feet long. That's what we have. So this is going to be a short video. But this will be the end of part 2. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe if you like what you're seeing. Have a nice day and peace out.